Are you part of a growing team and you need to quickly onboard people into your smart suite account, but you don't want to give them access to everything. You want to make sure that they only see the stuff that they need for their job. Well, my friend, I am glad to say that smart suite makes this so easy and I'm going to be breaking down for you today exactly how you can onboard people using teams and different permissions in smart suite. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting, where we help you to get the most out of your no code tools. And SmartSuite is one of our favorite no code tools for back end database building, as well as front end interfaces and automation. If learning the foundation of no code automation is of interest to you, you should grab my free training at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration. There you can sign up and get immediate access to that training. It is tool agnostic. So regardless of where you're building your automation, you're going to get massive value from that training. In this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be going into how you can quickly onboard people. The first place we have to start is in our account. Now this assumes that you you have some sort of admin level permissions inside of the overall smart suite account. So if you've just been invited to join a different smart suite workspace that you don't have account ownership of, this will not pertain to you. But assuming that you are in fact that admin, go ahead and follow along with me. Or if you're not already a smart suite user, use our affiliate link to show some love back to the channel and go ahead and follow along here as well. So the first place we're going to go here I am in an account a demo account where I am admin level permissions and you see it's greeting me, you know, good afternoon, Gareth, where I want to go is up here on my profile and I want to come down to workspace administration. Again, we have to have the right level of permissions. If you don't see this on your screen, it's because you don't have that permission level granted. So I'm going to select workspace admin here. And it's going to open up the back end settings, the account settings for our smart suite account. So here I am inside of that. And the first place I want to draw our attention to is managing teams. So first and foremost, we have to have our teams built inside of smart suite already. There are two ways you can view this either in the list as I have right here, or we can look at that grid view on more of like a card perspective. But in either case, we're looking at three teams in my example that I've already built. I've got a finance team, an operations team, and a sales team. So if we drop in here, we can see that on this first team finance, we can click in and we see that we have one member here already assigned and we have access to everybody else who's available over here that we can add to the team. Now we can also flip into the next part, which is owners. And of course, this is showing us who has ownership on this team. So who can actually control this, who can see this and who can make big changes to the team overall. So our finance team just has that one person. Of course, we can rename the team here and also come in and change the color associated with the team. Now, the important part about this is that as we bring on or onboard new people, we want to add those new team members to the teams that they are a part of. So in this case, for example, let's say we were onboarding a new team member. Well, we might want to bring them into the automations team. So after we've added them to our workspace, we then find them on the list here and just bump them on over so that they can join the team and then be sure, of course, to update the team and save those changes. We now see that there are five members on this team if we're looking at it at a glance. Now, why does all of this matter? Yes, it's nice for the back end to stay organized, but more importantly, it has to do with when we're actually activating these team members and giving them access to different components within the tool. So let's back out of the administration workspace right now and go back to just our smart suite workspace in general. Let's go to the template gallery and install a new template for client engagements here. I'll include the link wherever you found this video so that you can get up and running quickly by installing this template as well and you can follow the exact steps I'm about to take. Now that we're fully loaded inside of our new solution client engagements, we're going to go up to the solution level and click here and come on down to permissions. Now by default in my account, it's set to be private only to me, meaning that anybody else in my workspace is not going to see this solution yet, but that does not help collaboration. Smart Suite is a collaborative product management type of tool. We want to share it with everybody so that we can make sure to take our organization to the next level. 
In order to do that, we have a couple of options. Now, the first and the easiest is to come down to what teams have full access. So rather than giving full-blown access to everybody, maybe this particular scenario here, this solution, only needs to be shared with our finance and our sales teams. In that case, come down here, grant those teams access. So I can simply say, add a team, sales, finance, done, the end. Now those two teams have automatic access to this. So anybody who's on either of those teams will now see this brand new solution in their workspace when they've logged into SmartSuite. However, maybe we need to take this to the next level. Maybe sales needs to interact with this data, but finance only needs to view it. Well, we can get more granular if we need to, and it looks like this. Rather than adding teams to have full access, let's go down to advanced permissions instead, and we're gonna come in and go down into teams or members. So with advanced permissions, yes, we can control the members individually, or at a bigger level, we can go all the way down and find those teams. So let's go back to our teams with full access and remove full access for these teams go back to advanced permissions, and now we'll find those teams on the dropdown list. So maybe, as I was saying, sales needs to be able to edit this. So we can give them full access, we can give them editor access, and we can just make that addition here. So now anybody on the sales team has editor access to this solution. Next, let's go back in again, scroll all the way down, find the finance team, and the finance team, maybe they only need to have viewer access, which as we see here means that they can view all content, but they can't create, they can't edit, and they can't comment. Or maybe we want them to be able to comment, but not edit. We can give them commenter access. Now I wanna point out that this only means that they will have that level of permission in this specific solution. So of course, our finance team might have completely separate solutions that they're working in where they have full access or editor access. It's just that we're limiting what they can do in this specific solution. Once we're happy with our choices, make sure we add those things here and we can back out. Now, how does this make our jobs easier when we're onboarding new people? Well, now we can go and add new people very simply by going back now to our workspace administration. And instead of going to manage teams, because we've already set up our teams and we've already presumably assigned teams to all of our different solutions that we use in our organization, now we go to manage members manage members where we can invite new members and as we do so select what team they're going to be a part of so we bring in these new members and we can automatically give them access to specific teams and with these permissions they will have access to all of the solutions and all of the various permissions assigned to that specific team. So if they're on the sales team, they're going to see and have edit access to the solution that we just set up for them. It's that simple. So now all we have to really do in SmartSuite, instead of managing their access to every single little solution that we've built across the org, now all we have to do is manage what team this individual is on. And of course, we can do this with existing members as well. Here is our existing member list. And as we already demonstrated, we can add or remove these people from the different teams in our system. Now, as a couple of closing thoughts, there are some things to be aware of in terms of permissions in SmartSuite. Most importantly, that permissions are optimistic, meaning, if you have conflicting levels of permission applying to the same person within a solution, they are going to inherit whichever of those permission levels is greater. So if you gave them permission level of commenter and then also gave them permission level of editor, because editor is the higher level of permissions, that is what they will inherit. So we have to be very mindful of that when we're establishing the different permissions. Because if you have, let's say for example, one person on two teams and the teams have various levels of permissions, they will inherit the greater level of permissions. Now the other important thing to remember is that team permissions do not only get managed at the highest level, that is at the solution. 
This is what we demonstrated, permissions at the solution level. However, we can get way more granular in Smart Suite, and this really does make it a very powerful tool for permissions inside of your organization. So here, we could actually go into the team members table and we can change permissions here. So we could say, ah, well, we're gonna actually override the solution level permissions. And maybe we want to make sure that certain people don't have access or do have access. So we can control at a table level and even at a field level what people can see inside of our solutions. So yes, the easiest place to manage all of this is at the top level, at the solution, but we can get way more granular. So do remember that you have much more control over the simple example that we demoed here. I know we went pretty fast in this video and we covered a lot. So let me know what questions you have by dropping them below. And of course, in the meantime, my friend, keep on building.